What's up everyone? Uh, welcome back to a, another build guide video. Uh, today we're going to be doing the jungle build. I appreciate everybody that's been watching the previous ones. Hopefully you guys have gotten some useful information from them. I have had a few questions as to what website this is that I'm using to make these builds and kind of like make the video. Uh, you can use this on omita.city. Uh, that is the website. I'll probably put a link to it uh, down in the description uh, of this video. But I'm just going to go straight into it because this might be a long one. Jungle is kind of the most flexible role, so there is a lot of heroes to go over. To start, we're going to go with Countess. Uh, pretty similar to her mid build, you are going to go Obelisk into Megacosm if you have the opportunity to. And then second and third, you go Wraith Leggings or Spirit of Amir. Uh, usually, sometimes if you go Amir and you need anti-heal, then you can get Tainted Scepter in the third slot. It depends uh, whether or not you need it. Uh, if you don't need anti-heal, I tend to go right legging second into a mirror. Uh, and then fourth and fifth, very much like mid lane, you are kind of required to get Caustic and Oblivion Crown, as they are your pen options and your burst potential, like like game power spike. So a few things that you can do with Countess Jungle, a little bit different than her mid lane. It's a lot harder to get the tier one spike, uh, which is Potent Staff. Uh, this spike is 1200 gold uh, on your initial back, which could be a lot harder to get in jungle. One flow clear is about 850 gold. Uh, so typically you're going to back on about 800. On your first back, if you can't get like a good kill or a gank off, uh, sometimes it's worth getting the Blood Tome, which is the tier two component into Spirit of Amir, and then going into your Mega Cosm, and then you go your right Leggings, and then you come back, and then you finish the Amir. So would look like this on the build screen but you're actually just sitting on the tier 2 blood tome for a little bit uh, so it's something to just think about when you're playing countess just because the power spike on your back is a little bit awkward uh, especially if you don't get a kill this will be pretty similar for shimbi i'm going to do shimbi next just to kind of get the magical mages assassins out of the way uh, initially just to make it a little bit more smooth so moving on from Countess, uh, we'll go to Shimbi. Shimbi is pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference is instead of going Wraith Leggings, you go Oathkeeper. Uh, Oathkeeper is a really strong item on Shimbi. It just gives you a lot of value and a lot of uh, auto attack cancels off the dash, off your E, off your Q. It's very easy to proc it very often. And combined with Shimbi passive plus the Oathkeeper proc, uh, it gives you a lot of DPS and burst potential, which is kind of how you want to play Shimbi. Uh, you do play her as a little bit of a split pusher. She is a little bit slower on the the gank potential just because she doesn't have a lot of CC or ways to kind of lock people down when she ganks. So her early game is a little bit weaker. You don't really start spiking until a few items. Countess, while has the same issue of not really having her items, she does have the fastest jungle clear in the game, which does make her gank a little bit better than somebody like Shimbi's. And then again, the same thing uh, with the tier two item. You can go the tier two blood tome on your first back into mega cosm into oath keeper, and then you come back and you finish the blood tome. This is only if you can't get twelve hundred gold on your first back. If you get nine fifty, sometimes you can go the tier two if you're confident in your ability to farm. Uh, you can actually go the other side of mega cosm, which is dust staff, which is nine fifty on your first back. Uh, maybe you split like a duo wave on a gank or something that you fail or something like that. You can go uh, dust staff in into the megacosm and then you can still get your megacosm first that way uh, without actually delaying your build at all uh, by 800 gold which is effectively what you do when you buy blood tome sorry 900 gold uh, but this is basically the shimby build uh, in the way that you want to do it i do think oathkeeper is good second you can go at third if you want to and get a mirror first uh, if you want to go that route you can also go wraith leggings or tainted scepter uh, in the spirit of a mirror slot or in the oathkeeper slot if you prefer that way instead you can go either or Moving right along, we're going to go to Crunch. Crunch is a little bit different than his solo lane. I talked about it a little bit in the solo lane video. Uh, typically, you go a little bit more uh, damage heavy as opposed to magical, uh, which is why you tend to go Ice Scorn. And Witch Doctor, you kind of shy away from going the War Boots or the Sapphire Mantle. You can still go that in jungle like you can in solo lane, but it does get a little bit less value uh, just because you are kind of expected to do a little bit more damage in the jungle. As for starting items, you can go Augmentation, which I think is probably one of the better starts, but very similar to Offlane. If you're going to go Witch Stalker, uh, Mutilator can be a great option. gives you the lifesteal to stack with Witch Stalker and gives you a lot of healing uh, in games. Either one of these is fine, either Witch Stalker into Mutilator or uh, Ice Corn into Augmentation. 
Now going to your second item, sometimes if you feel like you can get away with it, you can actually go both of these items where you go like Witch Doc or Mutilator into Augmentation and this can be very powerful. You do have a really strong spike but you are squishy so just keep that in mind if you do go this tankier build, uh, sorry damagey build, not tankier build. Uh, next item that you go is uh, you tend to go into like a hybrid build similar to the solo lane where you go into something like a Tainted Guard just to apply some anti-heal. Uh, it does damage to camps, which could be really nice, and then it gives you much needed cooldown, which is something that Crunch uh, excels on. Then into your third, fourth slot, you tend to get a Magical Defense item or you go Giant's Ring. Uh, Unbroken Will is usually the best Magical Defense uh, option. Uh, if you don't need it in the third slot, you get it fourth slot. And then if you need physical defense, a giant's ring in that third slot is fantastic. If not third slot, fourth slot. He gets a lot of value off this. You can proc it pretty much off cooldown with your crunch ultimate because crunch ult comes up very quickly. And it is very easy to get a lot of value off giant's ring. So these are typically your third and fourth slot items. If you do end up going the augmentation, uh, you basically just look like this. Like this is your build. Uh, and this is kind of just how you go uh, when you play crunch. It is, again, a little bit squishier of a, uh, of a build, but you know that's just kind of the price you pay when you go two damage items. If you don't go the augmentation, last item, uh, very similar to the solo lane, you get a citadel, uh, usually for damage. If you don't want to do uh, damage, then you just get a stone wall if you need to be a full-on tank. Usually citadel plus uh, augmentation or citadel plus uh, mutilator is enough in the late game. If you need the early game, let's say you're snowballing a little bit, you could actually put it in the Giant's Ring slot and put it in the third, fourth slot. Uh, if you are starting to snowball and you kind of like have a little bit of a lead, you could definitely go Citadel in the third slot and just kind of keep snowballing off of the damage potential of Citadel as opposed to the more defensive oriented stats from Giant's Ring. But typically I would recommend going uh, Giant's Ring or Unbroken in these third, fourth slots and holding off on the Citadel a little bit just because you can get caught out a little bit more uh, without having the extra defensive stats. And for like a newer player or somebody that's not maybe as experienced on Crunch, I would not recommend uh, Citadel super early. Alternative options like game, uh, you can always go like Frost Guard, uh, fantastic item uh, as well. And that's pretty much like all of your options. Uh, you can get a Tainted Bastion if you want double anti-heal, maybe you're against a Countess and they don't have a lot of CC, you can always get a Bastion in there again, uh, similar to the solo lane. Next character we have is Fang Mao. Fang Mao is a little bit different than in the solo lane, just due to how you start, but the overall build is pretty similar. So again, you almost always go next on Fang Mao. You can go Witch Docker if you want to. Uh, if you need it, let's say you're against like a Fey Richter and you're just not going to really be able to get a lot of value, you can go Witch Docker. I would say 90% of games you're going next uh, as you just get more value off of the you know, passive from it. Being able to burst people, dash in, E, pop your necks, usually gets them to execute range, and then you just kind of blow them up. Different from solo lane, you actually full finish mind raiser. This gives you a lot of clear. Sorry for the water break. <laughs> this gives you a lot more clear uh, by giving all of your abilities a cleave. So you dash in on the camp, auto attack, E, uh, auto attack again. Usually most camps will be cleared by this point and you can really start hyper farming, which is how you want to play Fang Mao in the jungle is just hyper farm. Uh, second, you go Pain Weaver. Uh, again, different from the solo lane. Normally you go Mutilator second in solo because it gives you a little bit more uh, lifesteal and tankier stats, which makes it better for trading. In jungle, Pain Weaver gives you a better power spike in that second slot and allows you to rotate more quickly, uh, which is really important in jungle. You want to go from camp to camp, you want to go from lane to lane, and you really just want to hyper farm uh, and start being able to have an impact. Uh, usually, this is your biggest power spike in the early game until you kind of get to like four items. Uh, but Pain Weaver is very, very strong and is a fantastic second item uh, in pretty much every single game on Fang Mao. Third, four slots. Uh, these are kind of interchangeable. If you need pen early game, like let's say you're against a heavy tank comp, go the perforator in the third slot. If you're against a squishier comp or you're really far ahead, go the tectonic mallet. Tectonic mallet gives you a ton of power. Uh, as we talked about in the solo lane video, it is a fantastic item, some magical defense, uh, makes you a little bit tankier in the team fights, and then again gives you cooldown and movement speed, which allows you to rotate faster. Uh, fantastic item on Fang Mao and definitely worth picking up in the third or fourth slot. Uh, if you need the pen earlier, 
then just get the perforator in the third slot and then go the mallet in the fourth slot. Last item, we kind of have a few options. I personally prefer Mutilator as it just allows you to 1v5 a lot more easily. Uh, but you do have other options of going something like a Dread if you want some more magical defense. Maybe you're against like a Countess uh, and they have like a Severog offlane and you get value from having double magic resistances. Uh, getting this last combined with the Tectonic Mallet protections can be very solid. Uh, another defensive option is to go Mesmer. So you just have a spell shield and it allows you to kind of just go in. You don't get CC'd and you get out uh, because you have the bubble. Uh, the last option that I would probably go in the last slot would be Omen. Omen basically allows you to dash in, auto attack, uh, you get a reset on your abilities when you auto attack with Omen, and because you're so fast you just stack it super easily, it's very easy to proc, uh, you get free auto attack cancels within your combo, and it just allows you to really like like go off in kind of 1v5 uh, depending on the game. Typically I go Mutilator though just for the lifesteal as it allows you to pretty much full heal in teamfights, especially if you have the strength tonic in the late game. Uh, one that I'm going to talk about though that some people might be like, well, why aren't you building that, uh, is Envy. Uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about Envy. Uh, I don't think it's particularly good on Fang Mao, simply because if I was going to go Envy, I would just go Omen. When you compare the stats from the items, you get a little bit of extra mana, but you get less cooldown, less power, and less penetration. Omen just simply does more, and if your auto attack is hitting for about 300, uh, like game, which is a little bit generous, usually it's probably about like 210, 220. Uh, your omen proc is probably going to be pretty similar to what your crit chance uh, damage would be. Uh, your crit would maybe go up to like 400. Usually when you auto attack with omen late game, uh, because you have 30 plus 20 percent of your physical power, uh, as you can see down here you have 320 power. This does not include the full mind raiser passive, uh, so you'd actually probably be around like 380 probably. Uh, it also doesn't include the tectonic mallet passive, which would also give you about another 80. So you'd probably be around like 450 uh, when you have your shield proct or pain weaver proct and things like that, which actually gives you roughly the same amount of damage. You know, 20% of 450 is something like 90. So you're doing about 120, but you're also getting a cooldown reset, whereas Envy is not giving you a cooldown reset. The other problem that with Envy compared to Omen is that uh, you have to dash first, which means that you're actually only getting the bonus physical damage on the E as your Q does not do any damage, and your ult is an execute uh, based on max HP. So having extra power on your ultimate does not actually give you any value, which is the reason why Envy is not super good on Fang Mao. Before anybody comments that, uh, I figured it was worth mentioning. The next character uh, is Greystone. There's kind of two different builds with Greystone in the jungle. I do think one is better than the other, so I'm going to give you that build first. And that is Saphir Mantle uh, first. I will put some of these other over here for now, and we'll talk about them in a second. Uh, the first item I typically go is Brimstone. Uh, well, Fire Blossom first. Brimstone is the tier 2 item in Fire Blossom. It just gives you a solid first back. If you full clear red side into a full clear blue side, you back exactly on 850 gold and then you get your brimstone and you can start just doing whatever you want to do it gives you great clear and allows you to gank and start doing whatever you want to do very similar to the solo lane uh, build it's pretty much the exact same thing as the solo lane build actually uh you go basilisk in the second slot it just gives you the shred gives you the debt it gives you the ability to actually kill people uh power cooldown is really necessary especially in the jungle uh being able to get your Q up more often, get your E's up more often, and power form is really important, which is why I think this build will be better than the build that we'll talk about in a minute. The third slot, uh, typically you get a magical defense, uh, again, very similar to the solo lane build. Uh, Unbroken Will is, I think, the best option. Uh, if you don't need Unbroken Will, because they maybe don't have a lot of CC, uh, I think a Bastion is really solid, as well as a Crystalline Curious, it depends on the composition. If you're against a Morgesh or an Iggy, Crystalline might be more uh, relevant. If you're against like a Countess and you know maybe something else that is healing like a Narbash, uh, Tainted Bastion could give you more value. And then the last kind of three items that you would potentially build uh, in these uh, slots, uh, the last two slots that is, and these are all kind of interchangeable, is Tainted Guard. Again, if you need anti-heal, you can build this in any of these three slots. Uh, if you need it early, I would typically get it third. Uh, if you don't need it and then it's like late game and you're kind of like, oh, maybe I do need it, then you can definitely get it last and there's nothing wrong with that. 
Uh, however, I do think Citadel in the third slot, if you can afford to go it without getting punished, is an incredible power spike and basically wins you every single trade that you could possibly get. So I do think if you can get away with it, it's great. Otherwise, go it in the fourth slot, gives you the shred, gives you the power, gives you the defense, uh, makes you very, very hard to deal with, and you can really just start you know, wailing on people between the double shred from the Basilisk and the Citadel. It is also important to note the reason I think Basilisk, or, uh, Fire Blossom is good. Some people might say you don't get the double damage uh, from CCing players. That is true, but you still deal double damage against jungle minions. You also proc the shred from Basilisk, the Kuro passive. Whenever you deal uh, damage to somebody, you reduce their protections. Uh, and when you have uh, done damage to somebody six times, you then start to deal extra damage on your auto attacks. That actually procs off the Fire Blossom, so your Fire Blossom can actually stack this for you, which allows you to stack it with your Q very, very quickly within like one or two auto attacks, which then allows you to start chunking. Uh, so that is important to note as well. And then last item, the typical stone wall. Uh, you can go the fire block, or not the fire blossom, the frost guard last as well. Another good option if you want it. Uh, other than that, the last item that I would potentially talk about is Ella Frost. Ella Frost can be okay in certain games. If I get it, it's a replacement for fire blossom in the late game. However, it depends on what you kind of want to do. If you think you can get away with it and you don't get punished as much, you do get a little bit of extra HP, but you do lose some protections. One of the benefits, though, is that it does give cooldown, so Ella Frost in the late game can be very valuable. Uh, this is kind of what I do if you get to that point in the game. Most games don't go this late. However, if you do get to the point where you have a potion and you have all of your items, you can swap a Fire Blossom for an Ella Frost and just try to run people down. Ella Frost on Greystone basically means that you can't get away from him, which is very, very strong. And then we're going to talk about the second build. I'm going to put it down here just to make it a little different. Uh, the build that other people sometimes go, which is okay, is they will get a Overlord. Uh, where is it? Overlord. I can't seem to see it. My eyes are not working right now. Uh, there it is, first item. <laughs> Uh, Overlord. They get an Overlord in that first slot, and then they kind of use that to have cleave damage on their camps. The only difference with this, uh, you do get a little bit more chase potential with Ice Corn. The only downside is that you don't really get cooldown in your first two items. Uh, granted, you don't with Fire Blossom, but Fire Blossom increases your clear significantly more, and then synergizes more with the Basilisk. Whereas Overlord, you do get a little bit more damage, but the damage isn't really needed, uh, since you can kill people with Basilisk and Citadel anyways. And then they typically go into the defense uh, options, which were usually will be a Tainted Guard, uh, something like that, potentially a Citadel at some point, and you know, your magical defense item, which will be a Unbroken Will in most games. The difference with these builds is that I think the Fire Blossom is just significantly better in the early game and synergizes better with the build overall. It also allows you to kind of have a better potential to scale off of like Sapphire Mantle, for example, uh, just because you're tankier, the extra value that you get from protections and HP is just more effective in my opinion. You can try both builds. I don't think either is necessarily bad. Uh, the bottom one is definitely a little bit more upfront bursty damage, whereas the top one is more sustained damage and better in being like a solo tank or just being as annoying as possible. Uh, but if you do want to try the bottom build, it is worth looking into if it fits your play style. Personally, I just don't enjoy the build. I don't think it feels as good. Uh, next up we have, uh, let me reset these a little bit. The next character that we have is Grux. Grux is, I don't think he's particularly good in jungle. I wouldn't really recommend playing him. He is, not the best jungler, in my opinion. Typically, you go Ice Scorn. Uh, you can sometimes go War Boots as well if you need them, uh, similar to a solo lane. If you need to be a little bit more of a tankier character or you don't think you're going to be able to do the Gruxing as much, then uh, War Boots is a great option. Uh, very similar to offlane, you will start the Basilisk. Uh, getting the Basilisk online early is really powerful on, Gru on Grux, because like the solo lane video, as I was explaining, your passive procs it very easily and allows you to get the chunking damage auto attacks. The second item is you either go Bonesaw or you start going into full tank. 
uh, which is basically the last three items as well. Usually you go very similar to Greystone, a Tainted into uh, some form of Citadel, uh, Stonewall, and then the Magical Defense options, which are Unbroken and Tainted Bastion in most games. Sometimes you might get a, you might get a Crystalline, but it depends. Typically the, the build will look something like this. Uh, in most games, if you don't think you can get away with going the bone saw extra HP, you can definitely swap it and throw a citadel in here at some point. Uh, the difference is that the citadel gives you a little bit more pen, whereas the bone saw would give you a little bit more chase and potential to kind of run down the game. Uh, it depends if you need the defense early or not. If you don't need the defense early, bone saw can allow you to just kind of snowball a little bit. The downside is that you do kind of lose the citadel or you have to lose a stone wall stone wall basically allows you to be tanky late game if you have the citadel you'll do a lot more damage but you will be very squishy and susceptible to the enemy adc uh as well as you know maybe into other physical characters if they have like a chimera or you know a crunch or something like that you could be very susceptible without the stone wall since it does give you the extra mitigations against physical damage abilities uh, Grux pretty straightforward though. Again, if you need a little bit more chase or want to help your team out with objectives, uh, go the Ice Scorn. It's a little bit better in the early game. If you are going for a late game and trying to be a little bit more tanky, go the War Boots. The next character is Kalari. Kalari is interesting. There's kind of like a few different ways to go with her. Uh, I go a particular way and I'm just going to explain the way that I go on her. Uh, there are other ways to build this character, but I go a pretty simple route and that is to just go Malady. Other people would say uh, you can go like a tankier build, you can go a more like uh, Mind Razor oriented build where you go like Night Stalker and stuff like that. And I do think uh, there is some merit to that. Sorry, Death Stalker is the item. I think there is some merit to that. I like to just play her as a full ability based assassin that looks to one-shot people. Usually I will go Malady into Painweaver, uh, pretty self-explanatory, very similar to the uh, Fang Mao. The Malady helps you with clear and allows you to get a little bit more burst potential on your combination. When people are low, they take a little bit of extra damage. It also helps with their clear. When you kill a minion, it explodes and will deal some damage around it. Uh, Painweaver, very much like Fang Mao, you are a fast character, you spam abilities a lot, and you can use the mobility to clear and rotate a lot more often and be a lot more valuable in that regard. Next is kind of like a, it, it's a good item, but I don't know how good it is, but I've seen people use this to great effect. I have not personally tried this, but from what I've seen, it seems to be very effective, and that is to go a Death Stalker. Uh, in this build. This basically allows you to just auto attack people. Uh, usually this is more of like a casual type item. Uh, it is solid, uh, but I, it's hard to kind of get value against good players. In average queues, you will probably be able to get away with this uh, in the third slot, and it can be very uh, impactful in those type of games. The alternative in the third slot, in my opinion, is Omen. And then you obviously have the Perforator, which is your percent pen item. This is a requirement. You have to get Perforator. Uh, you can go at third or fourth. Either one is fine. The third slot, I think, is Omen or Deathstalker. Uh, if you go Perforator in the third slot, I would probably not go Deathstalker and just like to go the Omen. And then the last item is typically a Mesmer, just so that you can kind of, you're, you're an assassin, so you want to play flanks and things like that, so you can generally uh, look to combo people. If you are worried about getting caught out, Mesmer is a great option, or you go a Mutilator, very similar to Fang Mao. It allows you to just full lifesteal during teamfights. If you get an alt off on somebody, you can just absolutely explode them. And then one other option that works on Kalari but doesn't really work on somebody like Fang Mao is a Citadel. This can just make you slightly more tanky. Your goal is to kill the enemy ADC, so having the little bit of extra physical prots can be very uh, potent and it still gives you solid DPS potential as well as helping your team out. And then the occasional magical defense, you're maybe against a, a Countess or like a Fae that's kind of going to one-shot combo you uh, or a Howitzer for that matter. Uh, you can pop a dread on and get a little bit of damage mitigation in that last slot all of which are useful but that's pretty much Kalari. uh she's a hard one to play i probably wouldn't recommend playing her right now she does seem a little bit on the weaker side although she is good against new players so maybe you can kind of take advantage of her a little bit in that regard uh, then we have chimera 
Chimera is pretty simple character. Um, pretty much one default build, I would say. Uh, you can kind of go War Boots if you want to. I think Ice Scorn is probably a little bit better, but if you do need to be a little bit more tanky or you don't think you're going to get as much value from Ice Scorn, War Boots is a great option. Either one of these is good. Ice Scorn is a little bit better early game again, whereas War Boots gives you a little bit more uh, tankiness and could help you survive a little bit more in the team fights. Uh, I typically go Ice Scorn. First item, you almost always go Overlord. Um, pretty much every game, it's just your clear item. It stacks off his Q cleave, so you kind of get two cleaves basically on your auto attacks, and it allows you to really power clear the jungle. The, then you kind of just go straight into some defense. Some people will go Bone Saw in this slot. Uh, I don't particularly like it. If you are snowballing really heavily, you can go a Sky Splitter or a Basilisk. I typically go Basilisk as it is the tankier option. It gives you the cooldown and gives you uh, the corrode effect which allows you to shred targets uh, otherwise you can kind of go the sky splitter i don't really like sky splitter as much because you don't get the tanky hp and you also don't get the cooldown that you would get from basilisk so typically i go basilisk but i do think it is worth mentioning that you could potentially go sky splitter in certain games i would probably avoid doing this uh in most games unless you're really comfortable playing him just because the tank stats make a big difference on chimera then the third slot is defense you typically go the classic Tainted Guard, and then the rest is pretty much the same as all of the other builds. You kind of flex uh, these last items, uh, depending on the game. Unbroken Will, fantastic item. Uh, Void Helm is actually really valuable on him compared to like Crystalline, because you get regen from your passive, uh, which stacks, again, if you have War Boots, uh, even more value from Void Helm. Uh, very strong, very strong combination, and just allows you to be uh, a little bit more healthy in team fights, and then your typical last items, uh, Citadel, Stonewall, uh, pretty normal. If you do skip the Basilisk and just go straight in the defense, you can go a double magical defense build, something like this, where you slap a Void Helm on last item to stack with your. Uh, this is usually built with War Boots. You get regen from Unbroken. You get regen from uh, Void Helm. You get regen from Chimera passive. You get regen from War Boots, and this is a very tanky build. And you do do a lot of damage still because Overlord does give you power for your HP, and this build has a lot of HP in it. If you do go this kind of build though with the Void Helm and you go the double magical defense, I would recommend getting a Citadel over the Stonewall as you do kind of need the protection shred since you don't have any from Basilisk like you would if you go Basilisk in the third slot. Uh, typically if you go Basilisk again, you either go the Unbroken in the third or the fourth slot, Tainted Guard just to apply anti-heal to ADCs, uh, and then the Stonewall or the Citadel in the last slot. Uh, next we have Zaurus. Zaurus is very different than his offlane build. Uh, a lot of the offlaners uh, that also play jungle kind of build the same way. Zaurus is very different in that regard. Uh, I would typically build him the exact same uh, starter-wise, uh, Ortis or Witch Knocker. Ortis, if you can get away with it, his ult is CC immune, so when you ult, you do cleanse abilities and you can't be uh, stopped because you're unstoppable. So Ortis typically can be enough, especially if you're against like Fae or something, you can just ult or ult uh, and not have to worry about it. Uh, Witch Knocker, if you do need it, uh, is a good option uh, secondarily if you don't feel like you can get as much value. And then going to kind of similar to Feng Mao, you go Mind Razor. It basically just allows you to clear really fast and allows you to power farm uh, very effectively. Then the second item is a little different than Feng Mao. Normally Feng Mao, you go Pain Weaver. On Zaurus, you actually go Augmentation. The reason you go Augmentation is you have very easy auto attack cancels off your stun and your right click, as well as your dash. You also get a free auto attack off your ultimate, which makes it very easy to proc. It gives you a lot of movement speed when you ult, and then gives you cooldown, which is very necessary on Zaurus, so you get your ult more often, and you can keep stacking more uh, power off of kills in your ultimate. So it also gives you the HP, which is very important. Uh, HP on Zaurus, you are still kind of like considered a bruiser, even though you do build him kind of full assassin in the jungle. Uh, so I would build the augmentation in the second slot. Third, fourth, these are kind of uh, situational. You go Technonic Mallet, in my opinion. I think it's very strong. It stacks with the movement speed from Ortis, as well as the movement speed from your ultimate when you pop your augmentation. Uh, which basically allows you to get an insane amount of power. He also gets movement uh, speed from his dash, 
which is a little bit underrated and does give you more power on Mallet, still making it a very effective item on him, and then giving you a little bit of tanky stats uh, with the defense and the base movement speed is always nice, especially since Zaurus has the base, uh, the lowest base movement speed of any melee hero. For slot, you kind of have two options. If you want to go a more full damage build, you go the Perforator. If you want to go a little bit more of a defensive build, you can then go the Citadel. This gives you, again, a little bit more HP, some pen, and solid power still. You will still do a lot of damage with this build, but you will be a little bit more tanky, but you won't be able to hit tanks as hard as you would with something like Perforator, just because Perforator gives you a little bit more pen. The other difference being when you get Perforator, you actually have cooldown, uh, where Citadel does not give you any cooldown. Uh, so if you feel like you need to get your abilities more off, uh, off more often, or you're kind of snowballing and you're trying to continuously stack your ultimate, Perforator can be very strong in the late game. And then last item, uh, you throw the Mutilator in there. Uh, just for the ability to full lifesteal with the with the potion at this point in the game, as well as you get cooldown and a little bit of extra HP from stealing ability health, uh, stealing health when you hit people with abilities, uh, and then you do a little bit of percent damage to the tanks. Uh, so this is typically what your build will look like. Uh, again, the Perforator and the Citadel are very interchangeable. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't really change too much with this build. Uh, even if you kind of need, like you feel like you might need another defense item, I still probably wouldn't go it. You just have to play him in a little bit of a different play style than his solo lane style. Uh, you do not have anti-heal, which does kind of suck. If you do need it, you can get a Tainted Blade last item instead of the Mutilator, although I don't think it's as effective. And if you are going to go the Tainted Blade last item, uh, you should go the Citadel. Uh, just for the pen option. This is typically how I would build him. And if you do need the anti-heal earlier, you can always go mallet late game and go the Tainted Blade in the third slot, get the mallet uh, fifth slot instead, and then still get that Citadel in the fourth slot for the penetration. Uh, moving right along, we have Rampage. Uh, Rampage is pretty straightforward. Uh, very similar to Greystone, I think. Uh, you just go the War Boots. You can go Mantle as well if you want to. I don't think it's as good, but it can be uh, a solid option. I think War Boots is slightly better. Uh, as far as starting items, you go either the Fire Blossom first, or you go Overlord. I think Overlord is a little bit more of a casual thing to do. I uh, had to get another water break in there. This is a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so you get the a little bit more of a casual thing because it gives you a little bit more defense but less tank stats. Fire Blossom gives you a lot more tank stats uh, and allows you to clear very fast. You also do have actual CC so you can get benefits from the double damage on people. Uh, either one of these is fine first item uh, and then second item you typically go the Tainted Guard. Uh, a lot of the tank builds are very similar in the jungle. You go this Tainted Guard, you're usually against multiple physical comps, uh, which is why Tainted Guard is usually the best second. Sometimes if you're against, like again, a Magical Jungler, you might just get a, uh, what's it called, a Bastion in that slot, or a Unbroken Will. Uh, either one is solid. Void Helm was also pretty good on Rampage, just because you get a lot of healing from your passive and from your ultimate. Uh, so typically I would not go Bastion unless you're going to go Guard as well. Uh, either one of these is fine. Uh, again, if you have Guard, Bastion gets more value. If you don't have Guard, uh, I would not go Bastion in any game. And then you go the Unbroken into a Citadel, usually uh, the best option. It's just a great pen option. It allows you to do more damage, and then it gives you the protections that you need, uh, as well as some HP. And then last item, you typically get either a second Magical Defense item, which would be a Void or a Bastion or you go into a, another physical defense item like Stonewall. Typically the best option, however, if you are against like double ADC compositions or something like that, you could go a Frost Guard. I would avoid going things like Giant's Ring, even though it is kind of fun and meme -y. Uh It is not actually that good uh, compared to some of the other options. It's strong, but it's just not nearly as uh, effective as you might get. And then the same thing with Ella Frost. Uh, very similar to uh, Greystone, you can swap the Fire Blossom for the Ella Frost in the late game. If you go Overlord, it's the same thing. The last four items do not change. The only difference is that you don't have Fire Blossom. Uh, but Overlord is a completely fine starting item as well. Then we have Richter. Uh, Richter is pretty much the exact same as the solo lane. Uh, 
uh, you are going to go War Boots or Sapphire Mantle. And then these really don't change. The items are pretty much the exact same, except you don't get the Citadel because you don't really get any value from it. So typically you go a triple physical defense and then a double magical defense build. If you do want to do a little bit more damage, you can tech into a world breaker. Uh, since you are a jungler, it's a little bit better than it would be if you were to play solo lane, for example. If you do want the extra DPS or you feel like you're snowballing a little bit, you can get it in the third slot or in the fifth slot. Either one is fine. And then we are going to go to Sarith. Uh, Sarith's an interesting one. Some people would agree, some people would disagree with me on this. A lot of people are going to say you go full attack speed. I completely disagree. I don't think full attack speed is the wave. Typically, uh, the crest is Liberator or Eviscerator. A Liberator if you need the cleanse. If you don't need the cleanse, Eviscerator is the better option since it does stack off your ultimate. Then I tend to go Stormbreaker. Uh, it just gives you the clear that you need. It procs off your Q. The damage from your Q that reduce the ability proc from Stormbreaker does not get reduced by the reduced damage from your Q uh, the way that something like Sky Splitter does. So that's important to note since it is magical damage. Then the second item, I typically go Citadel. Uh, if you're really ahead and you're starting to snowball, you can go Sky Splitter. Typically, the defense and the HP from Citadel allows you to win trades a lot harder without losing too much of a damage spike. So usually I will go Citadel second, but sometimes uh, it is worth getting a Sky Splitter. The other option that you can go in this slot is a Basilisk. Uh, very good option as well if you need a little bit more HP, but you still want to do some damage. Uh, cooldown is very important on Sarath, so typically uh, Basilisk is built either second or third. Usually my best build would be Stormbreaker into Citadel into Basilisk. If you don't go uh, Basilisk second, or sorry, Citadel or Basilisk second, and you get the Sky Splitter, uh, you have to go the Citadel, which feels bad because then you're kind of three items in a row without cooldown, and that feels pretty bad. So usually I tend to not go the Sky Splitter early and go something more like this with Citadel into Basilisk. And then you get your one magical defense item, uh, which will be Unbroken Will. Uh, very strong item. Uh, Again, we talked about it all day uh, in this video. It just gives you really good stats all day yesterday in the solo lane video. It's just good stats. Magical armor gives you extra when you get stunned. You get more healing. Uh, just a really, really strong item. And then I finish with the Sky Splitter last. If you do go Sky Splitter uh, in the first three slots and you don't get the Basilisk, then you are now four items without uh, cooldown, which is why I don't think it's as good. And I typically get it in the last slot, which then allows you to kill the tanks in the late game. Uh, an alternative option, if you are like snowballing and you're really far ahead, you could always get a Dread uh, for your magical defense, and you can also get a Tectonic Mallet as your magical defense item. You do get a little bit of movement speed from your ultimate, which does allow you to kind of take advantage of this item a little bit, although it's not as effective as just getting a straight magical defense item uh, with some HP on it or getting a Dread for just the mitigations. Uh, but the best option, in my opinion, is almost always the Unbroken Will, and usually most games you will go the Liberator. But if you are against a low CC comp, Eviscerator can be very effective uh, and is just something that I would take note of. Uh, who's up next? Severog. Severog. Severog is very similar to his solo lane video. Uh, not much changes there. You always go War Boots. Uh, you pretty much always go the Fire Blossom start. There's not really much else you can do into the Tainted into a magical defense option uh, either literally any of the magical defense options are the best but unbroken is typically uh, my favorite you can also go a flux matrix since you are in the jungle you can get away with flux uh, a lot you can also go flux second into the tainted uh, if you are against more magical comps so just something to think about it does give you a lot of cooldown which is why i tend to build this item a lot. Usually I will go double magical defense like this uh, and build something along these lines. If you are trying to like snowball the game a little bit, uh, you can go a world breaker in here as well. Uh, potentially maybe you're kind of snowballing a little bit, you get a world breaker third even uh, in something like this. Usually your build, uh, if you want the world breaker, will look a little something like this uh, or you go it in the fourth slot. 
if you don't want to do a little bit of extra damage with world breaker and you're just trying to use your cooldowns which is what i think is probably the best is you just go full tank and you go something like this uh where you get the cooldown from your flux and from your tainted you're very tanky because of war boots healing uh you get unbroken healing and then you get the physical damage mitigation from stonewall as well as the stun around you uh, which basically is your get out card whenever you go in on Severog, you want to dash in try to ult people towards your team uh, walk at the adc basically whenever you see the stonewall passive proc that's your time to walk away as Severog, and then you kind of heal up with war boots a little bit and you know maybe hit some creeps uh, heal with your q because it gives some life steal uh, and then you come back into the team fight and do some serious damage on your return uh, we already went over Shimbi uh, at the beginning. Uh, last character is Steel. Steel is pretty much the exact same as Severog. Uh, the only difference is that I would probably not go Worldbreaker as you are not a super heavy damage dealer, uh, in which case I would just go full on defense. Uh, the other change would be that you can actually go Void Helm because he gets a lot more value from Void Helm. Uh, so if you don't need Unbroken, you can 100% get a Void Helm in one of these slots uh, instead, and interchangeably with the Unbroken and the Flux Matrix. Uh, all of them are kind of flexible in terms of magical defense, and it just depends on the game or in which slot you decide to get it. But that's basically it for the solo lane video. This one is, uh, sorry, not the solo lane video, the jungle video. This one is a lot longer than the solo video and the other ones. So hopefully you were able to make it through it. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, support video will be tomorrow. I hope everybody has a good rest of their day and thank you for watching.